All right. After video one of properly setting up our interface, we are now going to get into references. The references window can be found here. It looks like a sheet with another sheet on it, which makes sense. When I open this up, you'll re notice I have a series of references already in place. Let's go ahead and turn those on. You should be familiar with references if you have done any 2D work. We're not going to get into attaching and attributes and live nesting and everything like that in this video series. If you need instruction on that, check with your functional C or find a another set of videos that covers that. So one thing I failed to cover in video one is how to get this view set up. This is somewhat personalized. I prefer to use the four screen setup shown here. Some people use a three screen. Whatever it may be, the first time you start ecosim you probably only have this single video or single window i'm going to go ahead and turn on views one through four now to get this to show up right you then have to go to window and tile this gives you the evenly spaced series of windows i prefer the four window just because you've got top front right and isometric. Now as you're looking at this you'll occasionally see things cut out where it looks like things get cut off. That is caused up here under view attributes by these three toggles. I turn them off normally because it can cause issues as you're going around. But if you have to do a clip to limit your view, you may have to come back in and turn them on. So if you go to place a clip in, it doesn't actually clip anything. It's because you turned them off earlier. This isn't typically an issue, but it does come up from time to time. There's also issues with that clip front and back that can cause other tools to act oddly. Now, a couple of commands we're going to use and a couple of things I'm going to do require editing our workspace and preferences. If you're used to working in AutoCAD like I was, you're going to want to come in here and change this input setting that says allow escape key to stop the current command. This makes it the escape key act like it does in Autodesk products. The other thing I typically set is save settings on exit. This is not necessary, but I find it helpful. The final setting we are going to update here under workspace and button assignments. I said in the first video that I prefer to use a tentative snap. And you'll notice it is referenced here a couple of places and is listed here as the second in list. Now typically or by default that is set to the left button and right button simultaneously. If you have a five button mouse I find it much easier to have it set to button four or button five and as you can see there's a number of buttons available to be set. Um, your left click, left click, right click, and then middle button. There's a whole list of actions that these all control. So by say holding 
shift and holding your middle button you can rotate views you can select come on Set. You can also update view. There's a whole number of things you can do by using those buttons. For our purposes, the only one I'm concerned about is that being able to use a tentative snap. Now, in other softwares, you'll see snaps show up. Um, MicroStation doesn't typically display those, it will display handlebars. But the way to force a snap, you get close and then you tentative and it will go to whatever snap you have set. We set up the button bar over here so we can use a nearest. The key point is a combination of midpoint, center, uh, you can do intersection, parallel, there's a number that will crop up depending on the action you are doing. If you're wanting to get a specific set of snaps, you can come into multi-snap settings, and now you can set multi-snaps one, two, and three as different combinations of those snaps. So you're only getting intersection, key point, or nearest with snap one, and so on and so forth. You can customize what you're getting in each snap set. I typically leave it on key point snap unless I'm looking for something specific. Okay, so we derailed slightly and do a little bit more setup stuff. So now that we have references on, we have our snaps, everything set, we can start talking about modeling. Now the intent of this video is that you are already familiar with 2D. So what we have attached here in one of the references is a 2D layout that was already generated at a previous point in this project. And our purpose is to then take this 2D layout and bring it into the 3D space. And I'll do that in the next video.